I guess my main motivation in making photographs is truly is a kind of search for some kind of meaning outside of myself. I think all photographers have a kind of odd view of the world, which is slightly removed, slightly distanced. So if I think if there's one central theme that runs through my pictures is the certain separation and wanting to connect. And then I would say at the center of it all, I consider myself a storyteller. But a photograph, a still picture, unlike other narrative forms, has no beginning or no end. So whatever story it tells, it's condensed and remains a question. Cathedral of the Pines was not business as usual. There was a long period of, of a long duration of um, duress, I would say, in between my two bodies of work. Um, I went through a lot of personal changes, a difficult divorce. I wound up moving outside of New York. And then there was just a period of time when I just was attempting to relocate. And, and the beginning process of that was I would go back to Beckett, which my family had a home in, and I would take long walks up the Appalachian Trail and do these long swims. And then through that process, I realized that I wanted to make a series of pictures in Beckett. And as if to confirm that, that winter, um, I was cross-country skiing, um, and I came across a little path that said Cathedral of the Pines and that keyed the entire body of work. Everyone who appears in the pictures, unlike previous uh, projects, are all in one way or another friends or family. So in other words, there's a certain intimacy to these pictures that doesn't exist in previous pictures. Since Twilight, I've been working with a similar team of like, very much like a movie, where I have my director of photography, my camera person, my line producer, it's about 15 people. Um, but they worked on all the three productions. There were three productions in Cathedral of the Pines over the course of two years. It felt very much like a family. It felt like we, um, we all sort of went through this process together. And so the, the, each picture begins with an image in my mind. And from that image, usually working very closely from the location, we will write a description of the actual picture. And then by the time the person gets on set, there's very little improv or instruction. They have read the uh, description, they know exactly where to stand. And usually my only instruction is, I say I want less you know, um, give me sort of less. I want it almost to the point where the body becomes a kind of empty vessel in a certain way. One of the things artists do is they create their own iconography, and this is not entirely conscious. For me, in this particular body of work, nature was like this very strong kind of thematic interior and exterior space windows to use as kind of frames that sort of divide these spaces. And then, yeah, there are certain props that I'm very attached to, glasses of water, pill bottles, um, old books, um, dirty blankets. One of the big challenges was working uh, closely with my director of photography to f try to create a palette for the work. Well, a lighting scheme. I wanted something much more um, subtle and quiet. And so I think one central motif is particularly, you know, in all the interiors, the lights coming from outside in. All these little decisions then started to help create the kind of look of the work. The first really po important post-production decision was just the scale of the pictures in that they're 
deliberately much smaller than uh, Beneath the Roses. And um, there are different format, different, um, and all of that to me points to um, wanting the main source of inspiration to be painting rather than um, film. So even though we're still using cinematic production here, it's more of a kind of painterly effect that we're hoping to achieve. Everything about the presentation for me was to suggest a window. So it's like, it's about the same size and scale and height of um, like a picture window. So again, it's like, again, referencing the act of looking through a window at another world. You, of course, have your own private stories about each particular picture, but what it's really about is the viewer bringing their own associations and their own history to a picture and to kind of, kind of project a meaning onto it.